This is Galicia. Tucked away in a little corner of Spain is this region called Galicia. Before I moved to Spain, I didn't even know of this place, which is shocking because it's insanely beautiful. I haven't quite put my finger on why this place flies so low under the radar. Maybe it has something to do with its narco past or bewitching legends. The intention was never to really go to Galicia. So a few months ago, last year in 2021, I quit my job teaching and started this peak project. And the idea of this project is to climb or reach the highest peak in every European country. April was a pretty unforgiving month weather-wise. People in the Azores are used to seismic activity, but there's nothing normal about what's going on there right now. Over the past couple of weeks, it wasn't gonna happen. So we drove our van to Galicia. Our our first stop was at a surf beach. Just imagine jaw-dropping viewpoints. People who love to share their story and crab hunting. But anyways, it was a dreamy place and I didn't really want to leave this part. But hey, laundry calls. So, of course, what did we do? We drove into Vigo. And this is the moment when I started to fall in love with Galicia. We met with some friends who told us stories of legends and witches and the darker side of the region, which we won't talk about in this video. But this is where it started. I mean, okay, let's be honest. Every autonomous region in Spain has its own mystique. Like you've got the Moorish kingdoms down in the south in Andalusia and the hunt for the Holy Grail in Catalonia. But there's just something about these lands that really captured me. There's a saying here in Galicia that goes something like, I don't believe in witches, but they do exist. They say there are witches and mages, which are the good ones, that call these parts home and the bad ones are not to be messed with. Once you start to look, you'll notice symbols all over the place. These little buildings, they're like grain houses. They're situated on almost every property that you'll see in the smaller towns and in rural areas. And they're called Joreos and they've got the cross symbol on top. The purpose of this is actually to prevent the witches from cursing their food surpluses and the grains that are inside of the Joreos. It was chilling to drive through the misty areas and listen to witch stories of cursed houses and sudden illnesses. Maybe this had something to do with our van's water system all of a sudden not working anymore and so we couldn't have any running water. I'll explain it in a bit. One day, on a Sunday, we unintentionally stumbled into some Viking history. It's only been since the 80s, after Franco's dictatorship, that historians have been looking into this history. But what they've found is, well, let me tell you and you can decide. The Vikings of the time, about a thousand years ago, sailed up to the Ula River towards Catuera with the intention of raiding the treasures stowed in the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. In this very spot, they were defeated in a bloody battle with their ships burning and sinking. The Galicians fought off the Vikings from their raiding efforts and protected their lands. Not many in this part of Europe can claim to have defeated Vikings. Nowadays, you'll find that every August, there is a big festival that celebrates the defeat and there's a massive reenactment. And in this same little town, you can see a Viking tavern. So if this is your jam, this is the place that you definitely want to come. For me, I think it's just neat history. Every place we rolled up to was a gem. I know, I know, it's super cliche. The food is delicious. Oh, the people are so lovely. But here, it's actually true.
I felt like these people are the type of people who would give me a warm hug and a hot bowl of soup if I asked them for it. Like that kind, that genuine. <laughs> but unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. I didn't really want to leave. One night when we were in A Coruña, we ran into some problems with the van. Juan Pablo noticed that there was some water on our van floor and that there was leaking underneath the van and out from the back as well. And we later found that there was actually mold growing in some parts. I just found mold down here. We didn't really know how to fix it. We tried, um, we called professionals and they really just said, it's best if you come back and we take a look at it ourselves. So that's what we had to do. It's not a mechanical problem. So the, the van, which is our tiny home, essentially became just a van with a bed in the back because we couldn't have any running water. You might think like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm with you on that. But at the same time, when you're trying to work and live and there are two people and your little fur baby, like you have to be in a place that is livable, you know? So, and we didn't want to make the problem worse. We didn't know the extent of it. So we decided to go back. We made the long drive back to Barcelona and that meant I needed a plan and for something to happen in about a week. Otherwise, I'd quite literally be homeless. I'm not being dramatic here, but we left our apartment in Barcelona, but if the van's gonna be in the shop and we don't know how long it's gonna be, I needed to do something. I was thinking about the history of Hercules' lighthouse and the famous statue in front in A Coruña. And I'm told this statue is Brogan, a Celtic king. Legend has it that his son looked out towards the sea on a cold, clear winter evening and saw a beautiful land, which we now know as Ireland. Okay, let's just remember the facts here. You would not be able to see Ireland from Galicia or any part of Spain. For that fact. <laughs> Anyways, some say that he and other Celtic kings set sail to Ireland and discovered it. Whether it's legends or extremely impressive eyesight, it still had me thinking about Ireland. It turns out it's actually one of the peaks I can climb right now. Take my opinion for what it is, but I can honestly say after having explored most of mainland Spain, Galicia has got to be my favorite part. Whether it was the witches or just the universe dealing me another hand, life has a funny way of nudging you towards a certain path. But honestly, whatever it is, I'm glad circumstances brought me to Galicia and Ireland. You're still here? Cool, awesome. So then I'm gonna give you a little update on what's happening. I'm actually in Ireland right now and I'm preparing to climb its peak tomorrow if weather allows, if everything allows, knock on wood. So let's get ready for the next adventure, my friends. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Ciao. Hey, excuse me. Do you know the way to Karunsul? Can you help me out?